Hi, Wendy Murdoch here, and welcome to my library. Today, I would be remiss if I didn't have a reading from Sally Swift. So today, it's going to be Centered Riding by Sally Swift. And, uh, of course, she has a comment by Bill Stangprouse on the back of her book, which I'll just start out by reading, because, again, he's, like, one of my favorites. Sally Swift's Centered Riding will prove indispensable. Wonderfully explicit in explaining and showing what should work, how... Centered writing is also wonderfully and imaginative in finding just the right psychological images to help go beyond the mere mechanics. A work of truly remarkable originality and ingenuity, it cannot fail to help many writers attain their present goals and then move ahead to set higher ones. So, you know, this book has, it's, it's revolutionized writing in so many ways. Sally was um, a genius in that she took her experience as a child because she had a very severe scoliosis and worked with a woman named Mabel Todd. And then when she retired from the Holstein Friesian Association where she worked till she was 65, she started teaching a few of her friends and she wrote this book in 1985. So it's still probably the most best-selling instructional horse book on the planet. Um, I know it's been translated into, I think, at least 12 languages. So it really is the, the sort of the, the standard of uh, imagery for writing and improving the writer's seat. And at the time, things were quite different than they are now. We didn't have this idea about, you know, fitness and that we have to work with the writer's body. Um, so it's really been quite a revolution since 1985. That's uh, 36 years ago now? Something like that. So what I'd like to read from is Chapter 6, Balance and Body Freedom. In order to be a successful centered rider, your torso must be laterally balanced. Ask a friend or instructor to watch from behind as you walk away in a straight line without stirrups, legs hanging free and limp, and then walk back. One half of the people I teach do not sit squarely. They sit between one quarter inch to two inches off center. And she's got pictures here where you can see that she's put a line on the person to show where the center is. Um, and I see this all the time. And I think the reason that so many riders aren't in the middle laterally is because when you're sitting in the saddle, your nervous system gives you the feedback of looking for both seat bones. But especially if the horse has rotated his rib cage, he's gone from here to here, your brain's going to want to feel both seat bones on this rotated surface and not think of lining up in the middle of gravity. And so I keep coming back to, we have to figure out where our balance is in the objective gravity, not that balance influenced by the horse. So this unevenness is very evident from behind because the line of the spine and the back of the seam of the pants do not come over the horse's backbone. And she's right, that's the easiest way to tell is just look at the rider's pants seam, look at the saddle and see if that's centered over the horse's spine or if it's tilted, again indicating that the horse has rotated his rib cage, um, and that can be from the saddle, the rider, or the horse. These lines may come over the middle of the saddle, but then the saddle may be pulled to one side also. The rider's feet are not level as they hang. So that's really the first place to look, is if you look at the feet and they're not level, then you have to start thinking of looking up and seeing if the knees are level, if the saddle is level, if the rider's hips are level, if the rider's top of the pelvis is level. The belt line is a great place to look to see that. And I don't even bother looking at the shoulders if any of those things are not level because the shoulders are not on the horse. We have to address you from the waist down and get all of that even and then see how that's affected the upper body. For many people, the right leg is stronger than the left. But whichever leg is stronger, the whole side of the body tends to be shorter than the other side. And what I'm finding is that because we drive so much and our right foot is on the gas pedal, that leg tends to reach more, push forward more. Um, and so if you drive for miles and miles and miles, you really want to consider what that is doing to your riding and just, just check. Have somebody do a little video so you can watch. If you have a strong right leg, you will swing your pelvis over to the right as you go up in the rising trot. This also causes your right seat bone to carry more weight. As a result, you will find that you cannot feel your left seat bone, and then your left leg feels short too. In making an effort to correct these feelings, you constantly reach down with your left leg, which pulls the saddle on your pelvis over to the left side. And, and that can that's a generalization. I mean, I've seen riders that 
um, can be off one side or the other. Again, you have to consider saddle, rider, and horse because if that horse is rotating his rib cage at the back, that's going to pull the saddle over and pull you over, even if, say, your dominant right side. In order to sit squarely on your horse, you will need a person on the ground to help you find your true level balance. As this person watches you from behind, step heavily on your right stirrup and pull the saddle back into the center of the horse's back. Then have your helper tell you when you are sitting evenly in the saddle. Now you will feel very strange and awful as you are falling off to the right. And that's what people report. It feels wrong. It feels awful. It doesn't, it's not the norm. It's uncomfortable. And so how do we know if we're in the right spot? We've got to go back and watch the horse and his behavior as we move. So just getting sorted out and standing doesn't necessarily carry over to movement. That's where I liked the quote from... Um, uh, the previous book that I read, where she says that standing still and motion are like two completely different things. But we have to start somewhere. So we can get ourselves in the middle, and then the question is, as we walk, does the horse throw us over to one side, or does it feel like the saddle does that? Um, and sometimes I even have my students literally lift themselves up, shift two inches over, and sit back down to get in the middle of gravity. And it just feels totally wrong at first because you're hanging off the opposite side of the saddle. But in order to derotate that rib cage, it's like shooting pool. If my horse has rotated me over and he's dropping me way off on this right, just trying to shift my shoulders, which is what most people do, doesn't sort it out. I have to literally pick myself up, shift over, sit back down so that the force comes down on the left side and derotates that rib cage. Very counterintuitive, but works like a charm. In order to sit squarely on your horse, we will need a person. Yeah, we went that. Now you feel very strange as if you are falling off to the right. But you are not. You are now even. You must face the realization that the old familiar feeling was incorrect and that this new and terrible sensation is the way you should go. Furthermore, you must memorize this new feeling because you will need it in your future riding. Various exercises are available to help you keep your correct balance. Let us assume that you have a strong right leg. So as you walk without stirrups, put your right arm up over your head and imagine the fingers growing up to the sky. So she's saying, you know, if you put an arm over your head and lengthen that side or diagonally, you can do either. And you will feel more secure. Keep walking with soft eyes and test your memory of this new feeling by wiggling around, upsetting your balance, and then find the new position again. Now, obviously, that's not something to do on a young, inexperienced horse, but rather your good old guy that's really used to you and doesn't mind if you do a few strange things. Then put your feet in the stirrups and pick up the rising trot. Check to see which leg and foot is carrying more weight. You can find this out by changing your diagonal at the trot every few strides without changing direction. And that's just a really simple, easy exercise that works like a charm is that you're rising the trot and every few strides you change your rising diagonal and you'll notice that your horse pays attention and if you switch back and forth you'll start to feel things get more even you'll feel more level and the horse will go straighter so give that a try next time you ride and i'll see you next time in the library